the importance of processes in real estate for agents, for teams, and why it's relevant in today's marketplace that if you just stick to the processes and improve those processes, what those processes are and how that can produce amazing momentum in your business. Welcome back to another episode of All or Nothing in Real Estate. I'm your host, Matt Smith, the founder of All or Nothing in Real Estate. This podcast is a movement to give back to this amazing industry has given so much to me and my family. Today, we have a special guest in the house. We have Ryan Reagan, who went from top producing agent on our team to COO to back to top producing agent on our team. So we're going to go through that journey and we're going to make have some conversations around the importance of processes in in real estate for agents, for teams, and why it's relevant in today's marketplace that if you just stick to the processes and improve those processes, what those processes are and how that can produce amazing momentum in your business. So Ryan, welcome to the show. Cool. Happy to be here again. Yeah, Ryan is um, Ryan's been with me since uh, since day day one of the team, um, and he was a part of he was my first hire when I wanted to get some leverage as I was a, a growing agent, and so he's been a part of a lot of building processes, and so I thought it'd be great to bring him into the show. Um, so he's got the ground floor look, he's also got a top producing agent look, and he's also got um, running the organization um, look. So he's, he looks he's looked at our processes from a lot of different angles. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's changed a lot over time. And I think one of the biggest things that have helped led to our growth is our development of processes and allowing us to scale. So that's yeah. huge. And I think I think like we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of this, but just an overarching like someone's looking at this and listening and being like processes, that's boring. It is, but it's crucial. Um, and I think that one of the things I learned early on is anything that you do more than once needs a process. It doesn't have to be this overcomplicated math equation or this big, thick book of exactly A to Z, um, but it needs to be a checklist, a step-by-step -step guide down to how do you answer the phones? How do you generate leads? When you get a new listing, what is your process to generate leverage and generate leads from that new listing? What is your marketing process for that new listing? Once you get the photos, where do you post it? How do you post it? Um, once you generate that lead, how do you convert that lead? What is your proven process? And if you don't have a process, we'll give you some of ours. We'll share those with you today. Um, but I also think it's important develop the process as you're doing it. That's where a lot of these came from is as we are going through our workflow, we're like, we're just going to jot down. Oh, that's what we do first. That's what we do second. And then we always enhance from there. Yeah. And people, like you mentioned, people can tend to think that a process is boring, but that actually allows you. I'm one of those people, yeah, by the way. Yeah. But it frees you up to actually go do things that you want to do because you are way more efficient with your time. Yes. And you get a lot better results if you are following a process. 100%, and it makes it duplicatable and it allows you to work on purpose instead of on accident. I think too many, um, I learned early on in uh, in one of the, it was back when I had a CD, a burnt CD for training. Um, so fuck, showing my age. Um, but that's that was the only training that I had and it was, I think it was Zan Monroe was his name. Um, and one of the things that he said is that um, mo so many agents become what he called a Pop-Tart realtor. Yep. They get they pop out of the toaster so excited. I got a showing. I got a showing. And um, I just think that we just we instead of building following a proven process and working on accident, so many people go through this business somewhat blind with their blinders on, and they just they allow different leads, different things to they allow the business to run them instead of them running the business. And um, I think it's really important if you got into this business, you got into this business probably for financial freedom, but also you probably want some time freedom. And I think processes are and systems are the way to do that for your own business. And if you want to scale and grow a team. Yeah, you don't want to be busy just for the sake of being busy. You want to be busy, maybe, but more productive. Yeah. That's, you lose, that's where that's where it's at. Yeah, 100%. Lose the word busy in your vocabulary and change that internal dialogue and when you communicate it i don't want to be busy i want to be productive and so how can i take all of this busyness and actually get productive action out of it yeah and i think processes are a great way to do that yep 100 percent. um ryan so let's uh let's go from you were you were executive assistant was your first first role making the big bucks <laughs> yeah man um, what, $1,500 a month, I think. Something, right? something yeah. very minimal. I bought you some free lunches along oh, the way too. Yeah. 
Yeah. That, that was worth it. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, part of that was like, I didn't have processes. I didn't have systems. I was just go, 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 go. Um, and I think I was just, Ryan just came in. I said, just observe and fill the gaps. Right. And so if someone is a busy agent right now, whether it's they're on a team and maybe they already have the leverage or they're just looking for that next step or want to organize their life, where do they start? Well, I think it mainly starts with filling the gaps that you are not good at or where your time is not best well used. Um, so for you, whenever I got started, you were not great at paperwork. And I'm, I'm still assume not. you're that, still not. No, that is not that changed. Is not, that is not where your focus needs to nope. be. Um, so, so hire somebody, if you're going to be looking for leverage, hire somebody that's going to do the things well that you don't. I think mm -hmm. that's a great place to start. I've heard, I've heard others say, you know, start with somebody that, you know, an ISA set more appointments for you, things like that. And that can be a great use of, um, time and money, but that's probably what you're best at. Yeah. And that's hard to, uh, that's a tough thing to outsource from the start if yeah. you are the great salesperson. And that's, there's too many fucking gurus that just say, Hey, there's the first exact process to start. And I think it's important to analyze like, where are your gaps? Yeah. Right. So, like I didn't need help setting appointments. I needed help. Once I set the appointment, wrote the contract, I want to go write another one. Yeah. So how can I take that stuff off my plate? Now, if you're struggling getting contracts, that's a whole different puzzle that we have to solve. And so it's not a one size fits all. <clears throat> I've been very, very blessed and privileged to be in some of the, the brightest rooms, the rooms with some of the brightest and highest performing individuals over the last few years um, in real estate, in the real estate space, team leaders, agents, you name it. And one of the things that I developed was a, I'm a quotes guy because it just helps me realize and process things. And so I developed a quote just by observing and everyone does it differently and it works differently for everybody. Yeah. And so I think that if, as you're listening to these processes, take them and implement them in your business, but realize this isn't the one size fits all. That's just not how the real world works, in my opinion. And that may not be the popular answer. Or it may not sell anything. I'm not trying to sell you. I'm trying to help you. And so I'm going to give you the real, not the, hey, if you do it this way, it'll work for you. It may not, but it worked for us. Yeah. Filter it through your business, through your marketplace, how things are going to work there. But make sure that you're being honest with yourself about what the reality of your business, your marketplace is. Yep. So that you're not just being stubborn to be opened up to new ideas. 100%. Don't just say that doesn't work here. Really look at that and bet that through. Yeah. And if you're going to say something doesn't work, make sure you've tested it before you say it doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Especially if you're learning from someone that's actually done it and it's proven. Um, it doesn't mean that it will work for you, but let's try it as prescribed for an extended period of time before we start making adjustments. Yep. So Ryan, um, <clears throat> as we're talking about processes, the first thing you said, just find those gaps, right? Find those things that where you can leverage other people and outsource it. Um, what are some of those things that you've seen people outsource um, either in our company you did for me as we were growing or um, you've seen us do as a team for agents? Yeah. One thing that was big for us from the beginning, um, I was in that role for just a little bit, but as a transaction coordinator, mm -hmm. that was, that was huge. Really, because that's such an important step of the pro or part of the process from under contract to closing, that has to go well for the yep. client to have a great experience. So, making sure that you hire somebody that or outsource it if if you don't have the ability to hire somebody in house, outsource it to somebody that's going to make that client experience great, and that process is followed well every single time. I think that's one of the strengths of our business and yep. it has been for a long, long time. Yeah. The, the client experience has to be first. And, um, we talk about like a, what is the seller's experience when they're listing the home? What is it? What is their experience when it's on the market for showings? What is the experience once they're under contract? Um, we talk about like the lead. I think so many agents are focused on lead generation, lead conversion, which is crucial. And we'll go through that today. Um, but what you highlighted, there was a client experience. Once they're under contract, are they getting more excited or are they getting more like, damn, this sucks. There's a lot of hard work here because there are things behind the scenes that um, when we're working with a lender title company, if you have great preferred vendors, right, that that they do a lot of that heavy lifting. But we want to still be a resource for the client through that and make sure they have a great experience. Yeah, 100 percent, because perception is reality for the clients. If if they are getting overwhelmed at any point through the process, it's our responsibility to have something in place to help fix that. Yeah, just and a, a lot quick, of that's just communicating well. There you go. The number one complaint about real estate agents is lack of communication. 
And so as you grow and scale and you leverage things in your business, um, you have more communication lines and you have to be sure you over communicate. Um, and so one of the things that we put in place is touch points, right? Every week we have an update for the client yep. and the update could be, Hey Ryan, just want to check in and let you know, um, it's time to update for the week. No news is good news. Do you need anything from me? Yep. Right. And it's just those little things that sounds crazy, but it, that gives Ryan all the peace of mind in the world. And if Ryan is a buyer or seller that's thinking about all these things, keeping him up at night and he doesn't want to bother you because you're busy or doesn't want to ask a stupid question or whatever fear they may have, if we are there to be that resource and over communicate that we're here for you, um, it's it just gives them that experience that they deserve. Yep. hundred percent. And then that reduce produces great word of mouth, re- repeat and referral business and your business grows and scales from there. Yep. Um, dude, let's dive into, let's talk about lead conversion. I think lead generation is a, I don't think anyone, honestly, um, I'm a, I'm privileged to be a coach for a lot of top teams and very, very, very few people struggle with lead generation, right? Um, there, I, I, I have a, a lot of knowledge on that area, but I think for processes, I think what would be more beneficial for the audience today is talking about lead conversion. I think that our business doesn't have a lead generation problem. We have a lead conversion problem. And so how impactful has it been for you as an agent that went to COO and now COO back to an agent to have lead conversion processes in place for your business as an agent and then seeing it from the uh, 30,000 foot view and how do you do that for at one time 40 agents that we had, right? And then now you're back as an agent. How does... How has that been important to your business? Yeah, I think it was. Um, so I think as an agent, lead conversion is something that I've always done pretty well at because I've taken pride in follow up. Once somebody gets into as an agent, once somebody gets into your environment, you have a responsibility to make sure they're taken care of. And yep. sometimes that's not buying or selling a home right now, mm. but it's still developing a relationship so that you can help their friends or family or them three, four five, ten 10 years down the line. So I think that's huge. Um, I think that's one I wanna, of the I want to stay right yeah. there really quickly. You guys should listen back to that again. The fortune is in the follow-up. Ryan has been a top producing agent. And Ryan, I, we've had this conversation before. Ryan is not the best salesperson on the team. No. Ryan does not have the most um, bubbly personality. And he's not the best on the phones. Like Ryan is not um, a quote-unquote salesperson. But Ryan is genuine. He cares. He follows through. He's disciplined and follows through with people. He builds trust and rapport, and people trust him with the biggest purchase or sale of their life. And that's why he's a top producer. He doesn't have, um, and I say this with all due respect, like Ryan's great, but he doesn't have any special skills that anyone listening doesn't have. No. Right? Like I say that about myself all the time is like, I'm nothing special. I'm a product of commitment, discipline over and over and over. And Ryan is very much similar. And it's like, you put me in a role play battle. One of my skills is I'm a great objection handler. Ryan doesn't necessarily have that skill, but he's still extremely successful because he sticks to the process. And so I think that Ryan has learned and, and come a long way in those areas. Absolutely. But I don't think that that's, I think someone could listening to this could be like, well, I just don't have that skill and I, I just need the time. And Ryan was a new agent at one point too. Right. And I think that if you just listen to what he said, what he if you just keep the commitments you make to the people that are in your funnel, the people that are in your pipeline, and you build a trust and a relationship and rapport, and they can trust you with the biggest purchase or sale of their life, that goes a long way. And that part of that is the discipline of doing what you said you're going to do. Yeah, it's just caring and caring enough to make sure they're taken care of. And like an example, you and I both follow um, Andy Frisella, mm-hmm. right? And one of the things that I love that I learned from him was that um, – Let's say that a client, a lead, comes into our, our our ecosystem and it's not a good spot for them to buy or sell. And they want to rent a property or they want to buy a property in another area or um, they need to work on their credit or it's just not a home run slam dunk. Yeah. What I see a lot That's of sales, most. Yeah, right? What I see a lot of salespeople do, though, is they dismiss that and they just say, oh, I can't help you. Instead of what, what would Ryan do in that situation? I mean, if you would dig into what their actual needs are, if their needs aren't to buy a house, if it's if if their need is to rent a home based on their situation, that truly is what's best for them, then make sure to give get them in touch with property management companies in your area. Make sure to still be a resource for them. Yep. If they're out of your area, make sure that you find them the best agent in that area to refer them to so you can make sure they're taken care of. 
you have to so be much a connect- value in that. You me. have to be a connector, and it's not just a like. And I'm I'm going to go really deep on this, and then we'll move on. But it's so important. Like, let's use the rental as an example, right? Let's say that Ryan's talking to someone, and they they just buying's not for them. It's not in the cards, right? Either they, they um, the affordability may be an option, they can't qualify, or they just aren't ready for that transition in life. I think it's so important. So many agents, number one, don't dismiss that. Still be a resource for them. Can be a connector to a trusted property management company. Um, in addition to that, the handoff of that is so crucial. Don't just send them a text and say, hey, Ryan, here's a, here's a property management company. Good luck. What if I could say, Ryan, I completely understand that buying's not for you right now, but I still want to make sure I get you the best service. The best property management company in the area is XYZ Company. Yeah. Let me let me give you a real world example. Yep, go for um, it. Somebody moving here from the West Coast earlier this year, buying was not going to be a good option for them at this time. And they moved here. They already had a rental set up. Well, they got here and the rental that they had set up was a disaster, uh-huh. right? And so they reached out to me freaking out, seeing if I knew of anything because yep. I had been staying in contact with them still. And I was able to get them with our property management company, made sure that that handoff was smooth and said, hey, like called the property management company. Hey, these people really need our help. Here's what they're looking for. Do we have options? Yep. Yes, we do. We got them in something that same day. And they were the most appreciative people that I've worked with. And I didn't even help them buy or sell yep. house. And so what Ryan displayed there, and I love that you have that real life example, um, because I was just going to give a theory. So I love that story. But like what Ryan displayed there is he didn't just say, here's a property management company. Good luck. I can't help you. Ryan called the property management company himself and said, I have someone that trusted trusted me when they came here and they have a shitty situation. How can we help them? I want to be a resource for them. And then again, we work with the right people and they're like, absolutely. Let's drop everything. How can we help these people? And then we connect them and then we absolutely help that person with their needs. Now let's fast forward two weeks after they move in and they go to dinner with their new friends in the area. What do you think the topic, when topic of real estate comes up, who do you think owns that conversation? Exactly. Right. Like we don't think about those things and we're too selfish and we're too small minded. We think, well, I can't help that person. I'm not going to get a sale today. I promise you, if you have that mindset that Ryan just displayed over time, you will make an impact on people's lives and you will become the go-to resource for when people want to buy and sell real estate with all their friends, all their family. And it makes a huge difference. Yeah. And it takes no time to do that. That's right. Just be a good person. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Let's talk lead conversion. So lead conversion process, you talked about the importance of follow-up. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go more in depth on that. What is, what is a gap you see or what is an important process that we have in our organization Um, that is important for everyone to learn on a process for lead conversion? Yeah, so I'll start with some of the basics there is you really need to have a database management system, whether that's a notebook, an Excel sheet, or one of the top CRM systems that or that's in the real estate industry. You got to have. Don't some do it way in a keep... notebook or a spreadsheet. Yeah. Buy a CRM. Yeah, There's some for some like money. twenty dollars a month. Just spend the money. It's worth it. Yep, hundred um, percent. But you got to have something to be able to take notes for your clients. But but let's back up there, there to whenever somebody comes into your system, to your database, into your life in some way, you've got to reach out to them as soon as possible. Speed to opportunity is huge. Whenever they come in. You've got to proactively reach out to them and have a conversation to see how you can truly help. Yeah. So let me let me bullet point this for you guys. Step number one is get a database management, CRM, some sort of tracking system. You have to have somewhere where these people are housed, where you have your processes ingrained, right? For us, we use follow up boss. Um, and so get some system, whatever system you work is good enough. Just make sure you work it right. The best CRM is the one that you work. Yep. Um, so have a CRM of some sort. Second is make sure all of your data is in one spot. So you have to use the CRM. You can't, well, I did this person, I had a, a text on my phone and then I had an email in a different email account and it has to be in one centralized location. Um, it's crucial. Second is Ryan mentioned speed to opportunity. He didn't say speed to lead. And so I want to go a little in depth on that after I kind of recap here, speed to opportunity. You have to make sure that you are there to help those person, those, those buyers, those sellers when they're, they're in the modality of buying or selling. When they're taking action on a website, if you set it up properly, most CRMs do this automatically. You will know when that lead registered. You will know when they're looking at a property. You will know when they requested a showing. You will know all that information. Treat that like it's the only lead that you've ever had, the only one you're ever going to get, and you react quickly, and you're going to have a conversation while they're looking at properties on their phone. 
You're not going to be chasing. You're going to be attracting and you're going to have way less objections and you're going to be able to help people through the process. Next thing that Ryan mentioned was the fortunes and the follow-up. So let's say we have the speed opportunity. They're not ready to meet with us yet. They're not ready to look at properties. They're not ready to list their home. Cool. Most people aren't. That's perfectly fine. Right. Um, But make sure that you end that phone call with a follow up. You help them build a plan. You help them. We recently changed our internal dialogue from a call night that we did um, because I was actually I was schooled by agents that were listening to me set some appointments. And I said, I don't like saying consultation. And I don't know if it was you or someone said we call it strategy sessions. I'm like, that's brilliant. Right. So I adjusted my language. I adjusted the calendar invites and I started talking to more people about, I just want to help you build that plan, which is language that I use, but I called that plan a strategy session. And everyone was like, I was, I was amazed. Everyone's like, that sounds great. I need help building a strategy. I'm like, that's what I'm here for. Yep. Right. And so like just having that dialogue and then putting them in a follow-up system of some sort, you can have automations, but you have to have manual touches and you have to provide value. And then once you're in that follow-up stage, just how can I move the needle forward for them? And um, we recently learned in follow-up that there's literally, there's only two ways to end a phone call. You either hang up on them or you set the next steps. Yep. And so don't hang up on clients, set the next steps. So um, we covered a lot there, but I want to go more in depth. Let's, let's give substance here. So you said speed to opportunity. What is an opportunity to Ryan? So that can be um, a lot of times people think just speed to lead as in like somebody came into our database. Now we're calling them. But that's that's just the smallest amount of it. Yep. A lot of it's going to be people reengaging with your content or back on your website. Um, and those people have already been in your database, in your environment, um, seeing your branding, having conversations with you for a while so those are more likely to convert into a sale sooner mm-hmm. um, if that's best for them. So it's really just any time that they are back active looking at properties or having some type of activity that shows that they're interested. Yeah. And so some of that activity could look like they revisited a website. They viewed a property that just listed. They saved a property on your website. They sched- requested a showing. They calculated a mortgage. Um, is there any that I missed there? Uh, request a home value. Yeah, that's um, both of them. yeah, like any type of buying and selling activity, make sure that you have a tracking mechanism for that. And I think it's important that you treat those opportunities like they're more valuable than the new lead because they are. What do I mean by that? By that, so you look at any national stats. The average online lead, which is where most people generate leads, the average online lead converts, depending on the study that you read, is around eighteen months, right? So that means this new lead that comes in, I'm going to practice speed to lead. I'm going to do everything I can to get in front of them. And I'm going to hope they're ready to buy or sell today. The reality is probably not. Probably not. Um, And those of you that are listening, I love this little trick. Those of you that are listening, you're like, well, I had two of them last year that did the very first phone call and they were ready to buy. That's amazing. Good for you. Guess what that also means? Because I know how the law of averages work. That means that there's people that took twice as long as the 18 months for other people and for you to nurture before they bought. And so like, that's great news, but it's also bad news because that's how averages work. Does that make sense? Yep. And so if we know that it takes 18 months on average for a buyer lead to convert online, online lead to convert, um, then wouldn't it be way more valuable to talk to a lead that's been in our database and registered 12 months ago? We've been nurturing by sending them properties. We've been sending them valuable content, educating them on the market, seeing our market updates, seeing what's happening in the community and being a resource for 12 months. We're not a stranger. We're not a stranger. They already know us. They're starting to like us and then we've built trust because we're providing educational content. And then they come back on our site and we practice speed to opportunity. That's going to convert 10 times higher than the new lead. Yep. But too many agents drop the ball there and don't see the importance. And so make sure that you have a tracking mechanism that you're tracking speed to opportunity of people that are already in your database. It will be a game changer for your business. It's not a magic pill. It won't increase your sales overnight, but you generate leads. You put them in the system. You have a marketing machine that's running constantly in there providing value for free. And then over time, you practice speed to opportunity. The right people will take the action at the right time. And if you do your job and follow up proactively, you build trust, you build rapport, you're going to close more real estate. 100%. Cool. So, um, Ryan, speed opportunity, we talked about um, We talked about follow-up. 
Let's go more in depth on like our lead conversion process specifically. Like we have a daily cheat sheet, yep. right? Um, and so what is the day in the life of a top producing agent on a top producing team? What does your day to day look like as far as your process to convert leads at a high level? Yeah. So for one, treat it like a business because it is like you as an agent, you are responsible for for your own destiny, really. Right. So you need to be treating it like a business, be in the office working. Um, and that really starts. Step one is is prospecting. You got to have time for prospecting. That's that's having conversations with people that you haven't had conversations with before. Yep. Right. So you got to have time set aside for that. Uh, depend on your goals. That could be 30 minutes. That could be two hours. Um, a day could be more, um, but you've got to have time set aside for prospecting. But then, like we just talked about, you got to have time set aside for follow up. So diving into your database, and it's really important in those cases. As you're doing either one of those, you've got to take great notes in your CRM system, so that you know the right conversation to have with those people the next time you're reaching out. Yep. Yeah. So I think um, there's a lot there, right? So. Um we talk about follow up and and I could I could talk for days on follow up on the gaps that I see and the opportunities that I see. I mean, I'll just give real life example. Um I called with our team on call night and all that I called was a follow up so that I reminded our agents, I love them to death, but they're still real estate agents. I reminded them three times to follow up with these people in that week and they did not, so I did. I set 11 appointments in call night. All of them were follow ups. And I say this humbly, but I'd be willing to bet if the agents actually would have called and followed up, they probably still wouldn't have set as many appointments as I did. Would you agree? Probably. Why is that? Uh, because they already had a perception of there what that go. person's situation was. They have their blinders on. Well, this person will let me know when they're ready. Bullshit. It is our job to follow up with them, not their job to follow up with us. They are trusting us with the biggest purchase or sale of their lives. I recently used to say, I used to say in our organization, we don't sell people, we help people. I've since changed my language. People don't need sold in this marketplace. They don't need helped in this marketplace. They need to be led, be the leader that the client needs. And so what does that mean? How am I helping them build the strategy for their next steps? A great question that I love to use is, so Ryan, I'm curious, what is the next step for you in your home buying or home selling process? I don't know. That's the answer I always get. That puts me in a position of authority and power as a salesperson. That's what I'm here for to save the day. Not a problem, Ryan. A lot of people are in that exact same position. That's why we've developed a 10-minute strategy session. We can sit down and help you build that plan for you and your family for your next home. Yeah, and I think what is leadership in that situation? It's education. That's that's what you've got to do. You've got to be an educated agent so yep. that you can go educate customers. 100%. And figure out how, how they're going to, like, how they need help. So education is what is going to get them to get out of their own way in some cases mm. to then go move forward with the option that is actually going to be best for them and their family. Why, why are, why would buyers and sellers not make a decision in today's marketplace? Cause they don't know what options they've got. They're uneducated. Yeah. They don't know their options. We're in this every single day and we have to make sure we break that down for them. hundred yeah. percent. And I think it's important whenever you, whenever you're brainstorming on that, and going through different options and thinking about how do I educate people? Think about situations where you've been uneducated and yes. going, you know, we're in real estate every single day. We know the process. We know, we know how everything works, but think about, I mean, go out and try to buy health insurance and, oh God. and go through that process. If you're not educated on it, you're not going to make a good decision. Yep. And that's, that's <laughs> well, that's partially because there aren't good decisions yeah, in yeah, our exactly, health, health right? system. But think about how much that stresses you out. Yeah. And it's the same way with somebody going to buy or sell a house. They just don't know what they don't know. 100%. Don't know what options they've got. Yeah. Um, I love it. Um, so I want to go, I want to go more tactical, Ryan. So I want to talk about like our daily cheat sheet. So we use follow up boss. And so I think everyone listening should have a version of this. Just create what is your daily wins look like? So we use follow up boss. So our CRM, first thing that we do is we check our inbox. Yep. Our inbox is our hand raisers, people that responded to an email, responded to a text, or we missed a call from. Yep. That's in our inbox. Those are the people jumping up and down. They need help, right? And so we need to respond to those first. Second is we have tasks. So tasks are manual. We don't use many tasks. Um, we try to stay away from them, and you'll understand why, um, because they become overwhelming. They become monotonous. But when we set a manual task, because of how we use our system, 
those are second in line because we told someone, I made Ryan a promise, I'll do this on that date, and I need to fulfill that promise. Yep. That's what a manual task is, right? Um, and so, and then next we have smart list. And so smart list that we've created are our flow of how we work with new leads. So our, our 10 days of pain, our seven day blitz, whatever you want to call it. What is that new lead process? How often do you call new leads? What is the cadence? What is the message, et cetera? Next would be recent activity. So when someone comes on yours into your CRM, into your website, into your system, what is your cadence? Do you know, do you have somewhere that filters the people that are active that I'm calling them a, as soon as, as soon as they're active, you need a trigger for that. Yep. Right. And then next would be just our follow-up cadence, right. Um, would be like a generic one. We have some other ones that are some nuances that we use, but the next generic one for everyone that would make sense is we have like a, let's just call them a, B and C. Right. And so we have hot, warm and cools. And so those are people that we had valid conversations with that said they're going to buy or sell in the next 30 days in the next six months or the next 12 months. And if you just start segmenting your database that way and you develop a cadence and a consistency and you follow up properly, I promise you can't help but sell more real estate. But the problem is people get in their own way. They want the low hanging fruit today. They get they get get away from the process because they either had a quick win, they had a low hanging fruit or they get discouraged because maybe they're not moving the needle forward. But the process is the process is the process. It works. You just have to follow it. I'm confident you'll never be a successful real estate agent. If you're always focused on, on the newest, the lowest hanging fruit, that's not, that's not a sustainable business. What you want is that steady flow of people that you've been following up with for three months, six months, a year, sometimes five years. Yep. And that's consistently turning into business. And then maybe you've get a couple low hanging fruit every month or two. What I have found is the people that have that mindset get more low hanging fruit than the people that don't. Yeah. Cause they're freed up to see more opportunity. They're not constantly chasing. And their phone rings a lot more often than the people that's sitting around waiting for the next, the next low hanging fruit because they're building relationships, they're building rapport, they're positing value with human beings. And so the law of reciprocity kicks in and yep. you just, you get, you get more back. I want to hit on that follow-up cadence too, um, as far as having those segmented, um, sections of people that you're speaking with, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, mm -hmm. once a month, whatever the cadence is, you've got to be really diligent with that. Yes. And if you're not, you're going to. You're not going to be calling people in the time that you said you'd call them and the time that they needed help. There's a reason you put them in that that section, that that monthly follow-up was because of what they told you last time. And it is your obligation to make those calls, have those conversations, and figure out how you can help. You'll miss out on so much business. And worse than that is they're going to just fall in the lap of somebody else and not get the help that they could get from you. Yeah. hundred percent. It's, it's going to, you're, you're kicking yourself in the shin, right? But also you're letting the clients down. Yeah. They're trusting you with the big, like I say this all the time, but people still don't grasp it. We are fortunate in this business. We get to help people the biggest purchase or sale of their lives every single day. Like you said, it's an obligation to help them. And if we don't do our part, we are letting them down. And I just think that we, this is why Ryan and I have worked together for so long. We just, we align in, we are doing this to help people. Yeah. They're trusting us with this. We got to do our part. Yeah. You got to have extreme ownership. That is your responsibility to make sure they're taken care of. 100%. And if you drop the ball on that, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and take that serious and figure out what you need to do to fix it. Absolutely. Um, I love it. So there was something that you said there that I wanted to hit on. Um, I think a lot of people struggle with the, like, how do I follow up consistently? Um, and they, they, they think too short term, right? Like I said, they have their blinders on. Um, and so how, how does the, the process that we follow, how does that help Ryan build a predictable real estate business, both as an agent and from the put your agent hat on and say from an agent perspective, then I'd love to hear it from a COO perspective of how does that help scale an organization or a team? So that consistent follow up, um, it helps scale scale in a lot of ways. And I think the but I think the primary one is the amount of trust that that builds from the community. If you've got a lot of great agents that are doing what they said they would do at the yep. time that they were going to do it, that means a lot to people because that's so foreign. In well, all salespeople do that, right, Ryan? Yeah, I wish. I'd have a different car right now. Um, <laughs> no shit. By the way, if you're a car, no a good car salesman, hit me up. I've been trying to find one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think they should listen to this podcast. I think that's where it starts though, is, is it develops trust. 
um, from the COO position. Um, let's see. I mean, I think, I think that's, I mean, that's what you need whenever you are developing a company and yep. really figuring out who the best people are to help clients in our marketplace. And that is, you've got to make decisions whenever you're running a company as who is going to be the best people to stay in your company. Right. And that comes down to core values, which we've done podcasts on core yep. values already. And a lot of that is having integrity and that's doing what you said you were going to do. And so you've got to make sure that you have the people in your environment that are going to do that. That is running an organization based on principles and values, not personalities and emotions. And I think if more people would adjust and run their business based upon principles and values of what is means to them at their core. And sometimes that means having tough conversations. And sometimes that means um, I've done this twice in our organization, letting go of top producers, like top producers that made the company a lot of money, but it did not align with the values and the principles of where we were going. And I think that if you do those, make those tough decisions as leaders and you love the people on the way out, they're just not a good fit for your organization anymore. Right. Um, and, and that's okay. And we're not for everyone. Um, but I think that you have to just look at, look at the people that are growing consistently and there's a constant theme. Their leaders are always developing and growing and they are growing as fast as they can possibly grow as their leadership skills. They are leading the team based upon principles, based upon values, and not on making emotional decisions and not making, honestly, sometimes not even making financial smart decisions, but you're doing what is good for the organization as the whole. And if you protect the whole and you build a culture of people that want to, that align with your values and principles, then you can scale um, as quickly as you want. Yeah, that's infectious, just like somebody being negative can be infectious. 100%. Right? And I think um, one of the things I want to hit on was uh, process. So we're talking about processes here, right? And I think so many people think that it's just boring. It's this. It's monotonous. By the way, I'm one of those people. Um, but it's also necessary. And it's if you want to build a predictable real estate business, you have to have a process. And if you don't have a process, the default is always chaos. We have enough chaos in this business. Right. There's so many things, even if you have the best process, you do you do everything in your power, shit still happens. Yep. Right. Especially in this business. And so we're always learning something new every day. We always we have to be part firefighter. We have to be part therapist. Like it's just part of the job. But if you have a process that you can follow consistently, that doesn't derail your complete derail your business completely because you're consistently adding people to pipeline. You're consistently um, building a predictable business, like so much so that we have a playbook to 20 closings. Like I can tell you exactly, you come in our organization, I can tell you exactly what you need to do every day. And if you do it, you will sell 20 plus houses without fail. Yep. No one has done it and not sold 20 houses. I guarantee you, you will sell 20 houses if you do it, right? Like what does the average agent sell in today's marketplace? Five to six homes. I can give you four times what the average agent does. Here's the plan. Will you follow it? And it's really as simple as like, there's other elements to it, but can you have five conversations, real estate related conversations a day? Do it five days a week. But how many people actually do it? Yeah. And I think, um, I was having a conversation with newer agent on our team about this the other day, as far as gaps go, um, in their business and what it was, was consistency. Yep. So if, if you're having five conversations a day, that's way more valuable than having 500 conversations once every month, right? Yep. It's it's because you are having, like I mentioned earlier, you're having the right conversations with the right people at the right time that you said you'd have those conversations with them. And if you are having big gaps in your business, it usually comes down to a lack of daily consistency. You don't want to ride that roller coaster and you absolutely will 100% of the time if you don't set time aside for prospecting and following up with people. If you give me two hours a day focused on prospecting and follow up, like the world's yours. Yeah, you, and you won't be overwhelmed. No, and you you sell however much you want to, right? Make give me four. Let's double that, right? Like it's it's there. Um, if you work with the right team with the right systems, the right opportunities, the right marketing, um, we've proven that over and over and over again. Um, I, I'm curious your thoughts on this analogy. It just popped in my head as you were talking. I think so many agents um, come into the business hoping to win the lottery. What are the chances you win the lottery? Not you buy one, you buy a ticket once a month and I'm going to win 800 million. 
or whatever. I don't even, I don't buy the lottery. So I don't know what it gets up to, but like you show up and you're like, I'm, I'm going to win the lottery today. It's like a, it's the, the chances are so, so slim. Yeah. You can't be sitting around hoping that so, a million dollar buyer is going to walk through the door. Or you can be the person that invests and does what I do. And what I teach our agents to do is you invest every single month, a certain amount of your income into a retirement account. And I know at the end of, at the end of the retirement account, it's proven you're going to have more money, right? It's a four savings account. And it's that consistency over time that compounds. What if we treat our business as, are we going to win the lottery today? Or are we going to follow what is proven, what is consistent? I know grows over time. Like, which one are you going to choose? Too many agents show up hoping to win the lottery. They're rolling the dice. And I've said this analogy before of to our team. And I'll share it with you guys. It, you have agent A and agent B. Which agent do you think I would rather have on our team? Agent A comes in and once a week, they make 500 phone calls. 500 is the number. They make 500 phone calls. Or I have agent B that comes in once a week and makes, makes 100 or comes in every single day and they make 20 phone calls a day. So they make 100 a week. Which agent do you think I would rather have on my team? 500 phone calls versus 100. 100. I want agent B all day long. That consistency, that, con that discipline that you create, the contribution you give to our organization, the trust and rapport you build with the clients, it's not always about doing more. It's not about being busy. It's not about saying, I look at all this work that I did. Were you productive? Right? And I think too many people underestimate the power of consistency and compound effect over time. Right? Like we're kind of somewhat in the new year. Um, most people have fallen off the new, year re new year's resolution by now. But um, those of you that are still hanging on or those of you that are trying to reinvigorate, most people's new year's resolution are tied to money or health. Right? Yep. And so either one of those, it doesn't happen overnight. You can't lose 30 pounds tomorrow. You just can't. But if you show up and you eat, if you burn more calories than you eat and you do it every single day for 90 days, See you're going to look different. You're going to feel different. You're going to have results. Same thing in your business. Show up every day for yourself, for your family, and for your clients. Consistently over time, follow the process. You can't lose. Yeah, and I think you'll see that the agents that are top producers on most teams are not doing anything flashy. Yep. They're just being consistent, and they kind of a lot of times fly under the radar. And a lot of people start like wondering, like, what's the secret here? There's no secret other than consistency. Quit looking for the secret. There is no magic bullet. Yep. There isn't. There is no magic lead source. There is no magic script. There is no, ma there is no magic. There is no secret. If there was, there would be people that are just dominating way more than they are. But the secret is, am I building, am I following the process consistently? Am I building that discipline on myself? Am I actually following up proactively, building rapport and trust with clients it is following the process that Ryan laid out consistently over time that produces great results. Like one of the, if you're an agent that's struggling right now, listen to this podcast, reach out to me if you need help. I'm happy to help you build this. Like it's, it's super simple. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. And once you build this process, follow it consistently every day for 90 days and then pick your head up and look back. You in 90 days, you can build so much consistency and momentum in your health, in your personal life, in your financial life, in your relationships, and in your real estate business that you will not recognize it, but you have to do it consistently for 90 days and not get stuck on day three and be like, man, I worked really hard for three days. How come I haven't lost 20 pounds? It doesn't work that way. Make sure, make sure you listen to what Matt said. It doesn't have to be complicated. Nope. Keep it simple. It's, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> keep it simple, stupid. Um, it's going to be much easier to follow and and stay consistent whenever you keep it as simple as you possibly can so we all have complex problems that we face every day right but simple solves the complex i am a i'm very very good and skilled at oversimplifying things and i make things sound super simple partially because that's the only way i can execute on them so many people get stuck in overwhelm and they want to make this big long calculus equation like literally I, our playbook to 20, you give me five conversations a day, you'll sell 20 houses. <laughs> like, like how much more simple can it get now? Are there nuances and I'm calling the wrong people? Sure. And we can help coach through that. Right. But let's start with doing the work that's required. Let's yep. start by eating less calories and going to the gym. If you want to lose weight. Yep. And if you're not doing that, there is no magic pill. There is no secret sauce. There is nothing that's going to do it. If you're not burning more calories than you consume. 
in your real estate business. If you're not showing up consistently, disciplined, doing the actions that we know that are required, moving, adding more people to your funnel and moving them through the funnel, adding value to their lives, it's not going to work. But if you do that, you're not going to lose. Yep. hundred percent. Cool. Um, Ryan, let's wrap this up, man. This, I think this has been great. Um, again, guys, if you have, if you have questions on the process, um, Ryan, give us a, kind of a breakdown of, of everyone, if they want, do a recap, um, and then we'll close out. Okay. So recap, keep things simple. Whenever it comes to all this, have processes built out that fill the gaps, either, um, find somebody to help you fill the gaps that you're not good at, and then have, have processes built around that. I know a good coach if you're looking for one. Yep. And then have processes built out, built around the things that you need to do every single day. A lot of that starts with just a playbook, daily playbook of what you need to do. Prospecting, follow up, being consistent, taking daily action. Too many people try to win the year and they don't focus on how can I win the day, right? And so um, break that down into bite-sized chunks. What do I need to do today to win the day? If you want uh, to listen to a podcast that is goes super in-depth, go back to listen to our Power List um, podcast episode. We go super in-depth on it. And I stole it from Andy Frisella, used my own little spiel on it, my own little twist of how we use it um, and how we use it specifically for real estate. So there's a lot of value there. We'll put that in the show notes for you guys to link to. Um, but I think it's so important. Have a CRM, speed to opportunity, follow up in your proven process. And I think follow up is the most important of all of them. It is. And anyone can do it. Yep. It's just that discipline to do it over time. Yep, exactly. Cool. Um, anything else you want to close out with? No, I think that pretty well covers it. But yeah, reach out to us if you need help. Yeah, yeah, we ha we're happy to help. We believe in contribution. Um, and so I think I thought it was a great perspective. Ryan, thanks for being here from... Um, executive assistant to top performing agent to COO back to, you know what? I want to be an agent again. Um, and so he's got a unique perspective on the processes and it's, it's, um, let's talk about simple, right? Simple wins. Ryan didn't say anything that was overcomplicated. Ryan doesn't overcomplicate what he needs to do. He just does it day in and day out. And he has amazing results. How many pennies do you have right now? Nine, nine. Yeah. He has nine pending contracts in the month of February when our real estate market just doesn't really move. Right. And so He's in the trenches doing this every day, and he's telling, he's giving you the secret, so to speak, of what works. So I would, I would highly recommend you listen. Um, Ryan, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me on again. Awesome. This has been fun, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, All or Nothing Real Estate is a podcast. It's a movement to give back to this industry. I know you got value from this one. Whether you're an agent, whether you're aspiring to be an agent, whether you're a team leader, there's value in this episode for everyone. All I ask is to share this with a friend. Um, we do this to give back, help us grow this message, share this with other people, and let's continue to change lives. And we'll see you next time. 